ml. Heaven Visitation 7 How exactly do angels look like? Well, the first thing you must know is that an angel of God is a heavenly person. As God made the world, the sun, the moon, the stars, and finally the mankind, he made the angels of God also. They are the handiwork of the Most High God. And you can easily guess that they were also made from the foundation of the world. We must know one thing, they were existing along with God. And they were made probably several, several, several millions of years, much earlier than he even thought of making the world and the heaven and earth and the skies and so on. In the very first book of the Bible, it says in Genesis 3:24 that God made a cherub to guard the Garden of Eden. Gen 3:24 So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. The same thing is also seen in Ezekiel 28:14, a cherub made to cover the throne of God. So that means, the day the throne of God was made the same day, God would have made these wonderful beings called the angels of God. Ease 28 14 Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now amongst the angel of God, you have three varieties, the angels of God, then the cherubim, then the seraphim. Among the angels of God, there are some who just are used like errand boys, but some endowed with supernatural power and ability. For example, if you read Revelation 10 colon 1 2 and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. His face was shining like the noonday sun. And he was so tall, with one leg he stood on the earth, and one foot on the sea. And when he spoke, it was just like the waters of the sea roaring, or a lion, roaring. So, among the angels, there are different categories. And then the cherub who were the chosen people, as I said in Ezekiel 28 28,14, they cover the throne of God. So that's why God commanded Moses and Solomon to make cherubim to cover the mercy seat of the throne of God in the temple as Exodus 25,18-20 and 2 Chronicles 3,11 say he made two cherubim and each was spreading its wings. One side was touching the wall of the temple and the other side was touching the wing of the other cherub and the other wing of the other cherub was touching the wall of the other side of the temple. Exo 25,18-20 And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And they Cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Point 2 Chronicles 3:11 The total wingspan of the cherubim was twenty cubits. One wing of the first cherub was five cubits long and touched the temple wall, while its other wing, also five cubits long, touched the wing of the other cherub. So, there are several kinds. Then again, just only one place, you read about the seraphim. They are found in Isaiah 6 2, above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And they had six wings, two wings to fly, two wings to cover their faces and two wings to cover their feet. What really touched my heart was that they're so close to God but they dare not look at his face. And they do not show any disrespect to him. That's why they covered their legs. So it is. An amazing creature, the angel is an amazing creature. 
just in one place in the Bible, you read about the seraphim. And about the six wings, of course, we read again, in Revelation 4 about the four beasts. When you read about these four beasts, the Bible also says they also had six wings. Apart from these in no other place in the Bible, none other creature is mentioned as if it's having six wings. So number one, the angels of God. Number two, angels of God with a special power. And then, number three, angels of God with the special errand. For example, Michael, if you read the Holy Scriptures as found in Revelation 12 7 and Jude 9, and the book of Daniel, if you read all these verses, Michael is the head of the army of the Almighty God. God doesn't need an army. With one word, he has created the whole university, and with one word, he can destroy his enemies, but I do not know why. But he has an army and Michael heads it. Rev 12 7 And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and they dragon fought and his angels. Jude 1 9 Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Dan 10 13 But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but, lo! Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Dan 10 21 But I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. Dan 12 1 And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And Gabriel, another important person with a special errand. If you read Luke 1 19 and 20 he carries special messages to special people. And Luke 1 27 he carries a special message to Mary, the mother of our precious Lord. And again, if you read Daniel 8 16, and there was an important secret message, which had to be decoded and delivered to Daniel, Gabriel was sent. And again, in Daniel 9 22 and 23 it's only a Gabriel, who appears before Daniel, and says, Daniel, from the day you prayed, God heard your prayers. But now he has sent me with a reply. He said, Daniel, you are the most beloved of God. Very much beloved of God. That's why I came especially. So, amongst the angels of God, ordinary angels, and secondly, angels with special power, special anointing, thirdly, angels with the special errand, then the cherub is probably to cover the throne of God. So that's why if you read Acts 6 15 when this wonderful man, Stephen was speaking to the people, his face began to shine, as the face of an angel and such people are described as cherub in Ezekiel 10 14. And seraphim that are mentioned only in one place, and there all the time before God. And these are the various appearances. Now ordinarily, how an angel appears. Revelation 10 colon 1 2 is the best example. You read over there. He had legs, he has hands, because, in his hand, he was holding a book. Rev 10 colon 1 2 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. So, if you read Isaiah 6 6 when God spoke to Isaiah, you find Isaiah exclaimed, Lord, I am a man with unclean lips. Then an angel of God takes with the tongue, the burning coal and put it on his lips. Again, if you read in Ezekiel 1 8, the Bible says, in Ezekiel had a vision of an angel of God having what looked like the hand of a man. 
Ease one colon eight and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Then, if you read the book of Revelation eight colon four, the angel of God had the golden vessel in which the incense was being burned in his hand. So, surely they have the appearance of a person with the legs and hands and so on. Rev eight colon four and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now, let me tell you what I saw, how they looked. Now, if you read the holy scriptures as found in Matthew 28 colon 2, you find over there an angel of God coming and just pushing the stone that was covering the entrance to the Lord's tomb. Matt 28 colon 2 4 and, behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. If you read Matthew 27 66 they secured the tomb as much as possible. They sealed it and they put the best soldiers who will not sleep to guard that empty tomb of the Lord but just one angel came to Roll the stone away. Matt 27 66 So they went, and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone, and setting a watch. When I saw the angels of God, the first time I saw them was when the Lord Jesus Christ heard my prayer for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when I was praying, nearly one month after I received the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and I saw the Lord Jesus Christ, and so on. I went to pray for a young man who was dying with my dad, my church elders and so on. And that was a time I felt so helpless that I had no faith to pray for God to raise this man up. So I came and cried and Pastor Lemur told me you must pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I began to pray for one full month for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Morning, I'll pray go to the office come back in the evening till 12 o'clock I'll pray, Lord give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit or I a die. It was that time, one day the hand of God came and lifted me up. And I went to heaven for the first time. Oh, I saw millions and millions and millions of angels of God. And that was the first time I saw them. Oh, they were so full of joy and happiness. And when you see the angel of God, as I said, he has the form of a human being. But as you in Matthew 28 4, they have the glory of God all the time around them. If you read Luke 1 19, Gabriel says, I have come from the presence of the Most High God. Luke 1 19 And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stands in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. So, that brightness, that glory of the Almighty God is always around them. Though they do have hands and legs, what you see is of course the face, the nose, and eyes and so on. And with their flowing hair which is golden, they look so beautiful. I won't say it is pure gold or pure black, it is in between the two and it looks so beautiful. And their faces are all the time glowing with the mighty glory of God. And it's full of love, full of joy. And the way they have dressed it just flowing in a white robe, and even that is shiny. And again, exactly as the Almighty God limits His glory according to the receiving, accepting, assimilating capacity, the spiritual capacity of mankind, these angels of God also reveal that glory according to the assimilating capacity of each individual. So for some, he may appear as an ordinary being, but for some, he appears in all his glory. It depends on how you are in your soul and where you stand in your spiritual growth and achievement before the Almighty God. So, as you see them, you do see something like a robe and something like a hand and the hand is covered up to the wrist. And then you see two wings flowing from their back. And sometimes these 
Wings come up exactly like the bird's wings. I would rather say they look like the wings of the peacock when the peacock is in all its happiness. The color of those wings is pure white. And you see the wings merge with the body. It is merged with the personality and they look beautiful. I would rather say God has given to them as an additional achievement of beauty and glamour. What shall I say? Oh, they look so beautiful. But there are times when I have seen these wings up. And most of those times that is when they are in action. For example, once I was invited to preach in a particular place, and there was a lot of commotion in that city and unwanted problems and these people who invited me for that meeting. They were a little bit hesitant to whether to invite me to come there. The problem is not because of me, but some of the problems there. There were factions and this and that. So they were a little bit hesitant but I was praying in my room, unaware of all these problems and the happenings and hazards. And an angel of God came and he said, Come, time to go. As I neared, I felt everything is not very much conducive and I climbed up the platform set and prayed. And suddenly, I saw on both sides of my seat two mighty angels of God, and their wings were up and their faces were gruff as if they were ready for war. They told me, come what may, you will have to do your part and we will be there to protect you. And it was I mean what it is so encouraging and you become a lion when they come and stand by your side. And in the same way, the people who wanted to create havoc, they came with deadly weapons, the torches in their hands. But for no reason, suddenly they put everything down, came and sat down in the meeting. And finally, when I said I have a feeling in my heart, that tonight I would love to lay hands and pray for all who want to be prayed for. Very rarely I do that, but I do not know why. But God said like, that, and when I came down the platform when I sat, inviting the people to come to me in the line. Lo and behold, the same people came while being before me so piously for God's blessings. Those people who came with deadly weapons to cause chaos, they are there standing before me. Bowing down. Yes, of course, they had nothing against me. But there was some problem. But thank. God. So when you see angels with their wings up, I know they are in determined action. They say. Come. Come what may come on, we will meet the challenge. Like that. Otherwise, their wings. Are lowered down and it's so beautiful to look at them. There is not much noise when they operate. The wings. But the most important thing is when you are praying in the room, a messenger of the Almighty God brings the message to you. Now Zechariah as I said in Luke 1,19-20 has been praying for a child for such a long time. There he appears, Gabriel in the altar of God and said, Zechariah, this is God's will for you. Your prayers have been answered. You're going to have a child. But this man began to argue with him, how can this happen? This and that that they don't like. When they bring you your message, number one. As Zechariah trembled, it makes you not because their voice is gruff, their attitude is very stiff, or their faces were stern, no but they come from the presence of the Almighty God. Let me tell you about the experience. The friend of mine was working in the Babha Atomic Research Center in Bombay. And he told me that to protect you from the radiation, they always give you a particular coat to protect you. One day his friend finished the job and went out. Then he found out he left the car key on his table. So, he came back, but he forgot to put that protecting coat just for one time. Just one time that only for a few fleeting moments, he grabbed the car key and came running out. Suddenly he felt something happening to his left shoulder. He found the whole flesh on the side of the shoulder, just falling down, only bones could be the scene. This is a horrifying 
experience resulting from the radiation of the nuclear power and the atomic energy. Likewise, when these angels come, they carry the mighty power of God. The glory of God comes with them and actually makes you tremble, not they but the presence of God. They come into the atmosphere in which they were standing. All the time they're standing before God. I am Gabriel. Standing before the presence of the Almighty God, and I thought that you would believe. So it makes you tremble. And the second thing is, that the moment they enter, you are filled with the anointing and power. That's the anointing that is in the presence of God comes upon you. And you begin to tremble. And they are always in a hurry, as I said, before the throne of grace ten thousand times ten thousand angels of God it. Revelation 5 colon 11 12 And again, in Daniel 7 colon 9 dash 10 millions of angels of God standing before the throne of God. Rev 5 colon 11 12 And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Dan 7,9-10 I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, thousand ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, the judgment was set, and the books were opened. So even then these angels of God are in a hurry because the Lord Jesus may be waiting there to give them the next errand and the next errand and so on. For example, if you read Psalm 91 91,11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. So he may say, Where is Gabriel? I have to send him to Tehinakaran. Or, I have to send him to Mary as she is going to a new place. So they're always in a hurry. They're always in a hurry. Once I was praying for my own city, fasting and praying for so many days, and I was praying for ten things and suddenly, an angel of God came and the presence of God came and it filled the room. And he said, Tehinakaran, God has sent me to bring the answers to all your ten questions. Will you take it down? I said, please, I don't have paper. I don't have a pen. But he said, I am in a hurry to go back. I am in a hurry to go back. That's a real sign that is an angel of God, I'm in a hurry to go back. And I really begged him, please. I will take a piece of paper and pen. He said, all right. Make it quick. And he would say, one, two, three, four, like that he gave the answers to the ten questions. And then he said, God bless you. And then he is out. The angels of God are very pleasing. And their main mission is to carry messages to mankind. If you read Genesis 28, 12, Jacob seems to be a forgotten commodity. His mom is not there, his dad is not there, and he's sleeping in the wilderness. Then he saw this wonderful dream, a big ladder, touching heaven and earth and the angels of God ascending and descending. Gen 28, 12 And he dreamed, and behold a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. John 151 When our precious Lord was talking to this fellow Nathaniel, he said, From now on, you will see the angels of God going up and coming down all the time. They'll be with me. John 151 And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And thank God, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke 22:43, an angel of God came to strengthen him, to encourage him. 
Luke 22:43 And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. So that is their main job. That's the main task. But then as I said, this mighty angel of God, Michael. He's the one who was to fight the battles. He also doesn't need a dagger or a sword. But for example, if you read Isaiah 37 36, just one angel was sent by God and he destroyed 145,000 soldiers with one stroke. So they don't need a sword. Isa 37 36 Then the angel of the Lord went forth, and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and fourscore and five thousand, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Nevertheless, if you read this book of Joshua 5, that Joshua finds a person, just like the commander, in chief. It's an angel of God. And it's actually God coming in the form of an angel. But he had a sword. Jos 5,13-15 And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And, behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand, and Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And you read again about Balaam the prophet going astray in Numbers 22 and 23. He saw an angel of God with a drawn sword, ready to strike. Number 22 31 Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. So, very rarely you see this sword, but as I said, in Revelation 12 7 Michael is the chief of the army of the Almighty God. And I have seen him. Only he has a sword hanging. And again I said, this is a supernatural sword. It is not the natural or man-made, or metal-like sword, but it is a sword that is given by the Almighty God. I don't know what materials it is made up of, but I feel it is ornamental. A friend of mine had a bridegroom for his daughter from the army. So when he was married, for his wedding, you find him with a sword on his side. And, of course, he looked beautiful with that sword. And so on. And they said that's the tradition to have a decorative sword, and he's not going to use that sword on his wife. We don't expect him to do that. But it adds to his status. And as I said, the face of an angel is always sweet and happy and he makes you happy. And he may encourage you. And there are times he cries with you. And the angel Gabriel is a jolly good fellow. Angel Gabriel is very smiley, I have seen him very happy all the time. He really is the joy of the Lord. And you see when he came to Daniel. Also he said, Daniel, you are the most beloved of the Lord. God never told him to say that. You are a fellow most beloved of God. Why are you praying? With such sorrowful face for your people? Why is your face like this, you are the most beloved person before God? So Gabriel is a jolly good fellow. But Michael has very stern and face. The year 1985 I was in desperation and sorrow, broken hearted. Because both my kidneys failed. And I had no hope. And so, we were in tears and we were going. Through the hospital requirements, were going through all kinds of treatments and so on. Everything. Was painful. One day, on the 23rd of July, 1985, as I was alone in my bed, just came back from the hospital. And I was so desperate, all alone, my faithful wife, my faithful son, Paul had just gone to take some little rest, 
because twenty-four hours they were with me. And I was laying there and so full of weakness and helplessness and what not. More than that my heart was broken. And I said, Lord, I faithfully served you. I never bothered about my body. And I spent all my time in either preaching or praying for the people. Why have you left me? What is going to happen to me? How long am I going to stay? Like this. Suddenly, an angel of God appeared. He said, On the first of August, you will be a free man. I was taken aback. He said, Yes. On the first of August, you'll be a free man. And he disappeared. There was absolutely no chance of my becoming fully free on the first of August. Then on the 25th of July. That is, I am recording this narration on the 25th of July, the same day 17 years ago. At early morning, 4 o'clock, the Lord Jesus came. And I knew that he is there and he sat by my side and talked to me for nearly two hours about the young partner's plan. I was one side wondering and on. The other side, I was in agony and suffering so much. And I thought the Lord Jesus Christ has come to heal me and set me free so that the word of the angel shall come through. But he was talking to me about the young partner's plan. He said, Son, there are so many, many young children who come to your meetings, what have you done for them? You should catch them young and you should tell them about me. Then they will remain faithful to the end. And what we should do, how we should register the name, how their names should be called in the register. Two full hours of instructions. And he smiled, and he went away. I was just wondering what is it all about? Then came the call from a common friend of ours. He said, Brother, get ready immediately. I'm coming in my car to take you to the hospital. And they want to have a transplant for you. I asked her how much time do you have. She said no time. You will have to get ready immediately. They want you there immediately. So 25th we went, of course. It was 3 p.m. when I was rolled into the operation theater. My wife was crying. Paul was crying. And the doctors kept on encouraging them. And when we went through the whole thing, on the 31st of July, the doctors told me, well, we may release you tomorrow. I was so happy. And then 31st night came, it was 9 p.m. exactly at 9 p.m. they'll change the nurses, change my bed, everything. And then they said, now you can go to sleep. And that was the first time my wife really went to sleep near me. Well, she had only a small sofa and that she was lying. And she was really sleeping because her heart was full of relief. And all the other day she used to be awake the whole night not knowing what time I will call. But thank God for that wonderful hospital, the wonderful hospital staff. Any moment they're ready to come and help you. And again at 12 o'clock. The nurses came to look whether you're alive or dead. You will be woken up and she will say, I am. Shirley, your new nurse. They used to call me Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, anytime you want anyone. Press this bell. I am Shirley, you know that? I'm Shirley. I said, yes, Shirley, let me sleep. They are so caring, I can never forget them. And then I tried to sleep. Then came the powers of the evil world. Normally, I never care about these evil spirits. I never have time for them. Nothing. Because in John 14:30, the Lord Jesus said, Here comes the devil, the prince of this world, but I have nothing to do with him. He has nothing to do with me. John 14:30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Of course, I have nothing to do with him. So, 
I have never and never and never and never thought about the devil at all. Even today I will not think of him. Because there's no time even to think of our Lord Jesus Christ. Twenty-four hours are not enough to think of him and to pray to him. All my time goes for praying and praying and praying for myself, for a problem or somebody else in agony. So, where is it time to think of the devil? That was the night I saw him in all his fury. And the angel of God said on the July 23rd, on the 1st. August, Dhinakaran, you are going to be a free man. And July 31st, the doctors came and said, We are very pleased with your reports here. And we may even think of sending you home. They smiled. And cracked a joke when they said they may even think of sending me home tomorrow. And the devil came and I saw the whole hell. The demons were so upset. They thought this fellow is finished. The real servant of God is a real nuisance to them. Because the real servant of God stops the people from going to his kingdom, the hell. He is stopping them and he's sending them to heaven. So naturally, the devil is angry against them. But what does it matter whether he's angry or whether he's happy? It is God's business. We will do the master's business. Hallelujah. That should be our attitude. Yes, they were walking up and down, up and down, up and down, a whole host of evil powers with a very angry look. And they said, this operation is going to fail. This body is going to reject your kidney. And tomorrow you will be back in the original place. You will be sick and dead. And so, many evil things they were saying and I was helpless. You must know one thing. When your body is strong and everything is fine, then you can boldly talk about faith. You can say, Brother, have faith in God. Have faith in the Word of God. The Word is faith. You can say and make all these statements about faith when all things are fine and going on smoothly. But when you are physically weak and worn out, when you have no strength at all, nothing can be done. Arrogant faith will not work but real faith will work. The arrogant faith that comes from your physical body strength and just because you are doing well, there is faith, thinking all of the other. Fellows do not know what faith is. It is a product of pride. It's certainly the product of pride that is given by the devil, not by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives you spirit of humility. Continued in next part.